I'll start off with some injury updates for everybody. So um, T's Tabor, uh, he does have an ankle injury. So unfortunately, it's going to um, force us to put him on IR for T's. Uh, and then we, we don't, there's no update as of right now with Tevin uh, with his shoulder. So we'll keep you posted on that. As far as uh, clearing from the COVID return protocol, uh, Allen Robinson will be returning. He'll be cleared. Jesse James um, will be cleared. Jalen Johnson, Ryan Nall, and Tayshawn Gibson. Those will all be, they'll all be cleared um, off of COVID, which is, which is good news. Um, as far as, you know, thoughts on the game, no, no, no difference from what we talked about last night after the game um, for the, for the guys to be able to fight to the end um, to, to get that win, how it happened. And even so, like, once we got the two-point conversion, to still have to stop Russell Wilson in that offense to kick a field goal to win the game, I thought was impressive by our guys as well. Again, I want to credit our coaches for, um, you know, as, as most coaches in the NFL right now are dealing with everybody with COVID and different injuries end of the year, I thought they did a great job of preparing guys, and I thought the players executed. So uh, always nice to get a win, regardless of the circumstances of our record. Uh, the wins feel good, and we want to um, continue to build with that and, and finish with these last two weeks with getting wins. So I'll go ahead and uh, open it up to questions. Okay, first question, Hub. Hi, Matt. Um, hey, Hub. I know you're aware of all the conversation going on outside the building about the future, and, and I trust or hope you know that none of us enjoy it. But uh, can you tell us, uh, have you been given any indication by George whether your annual year-end evaluations will wait until after the Giants game or, uh, any, uh, or any idea that you'd be talking sooner? Or have your communications with him changed in any way in the last couple of weeks? No, there, there hasn't been. We, we stay on the same path as far as the communication that, that we have um, with George, Ted, Ryan, and myself. Nothing's changed there. Um, and, you know, you're every year you're always, you know, aware of the situation of your team and players, coaches, all of that stuff. And, um, you know, we're continuing to, to move forward um, this week and prepare for the Giants. And um, that's again, all that other stuff kind of gets into what we what I talked about at the start of the year with that Giannis quote of uh, worrying about the, the past and the, the future. But we're in the present right now. And, and I. I and we all owe that to each other uh, for today and for this week with the Giants and, uh, and, and finishing out this week um, on, a, on a high note, trying to get a win and then doing it again in the final game of the season. So to answer your question, um, nothing, nothing has changed as far as communication that way. Thanks, Matt. Yep, no problem. Dan? Matt, just clarifying on that, and are, are you working under the assumption that, that you will coach out the, the remaining two games? Yes. You've obviously been very good about uh, acknowledging the big picture along with the small picture. When you kind of process yesterday's win today, how do you kind of contextualize uh, the meaning of that win in the micro for, for yourself, for your coaches, for your players? Well, all these wins, you, you remember different wins for different reasons. You remember different losses for different reasons. And yesterday, um, there's you know, we, we went into that game and um, – you end up not knowing how it's going to go, but you always, one thing that you can always evaluate is effort from players and you never know the result, but you can always judge effort. And uh, we saw that yesterday. All of our coaches see it. When you see it on tape, you see it on the airplane last night when you're watching it, uh, you see it again this morning and you value that. Uh, I think it, it's just, it's, it states to who the players are uh, in this building. Um, there, there is that that's, they deserve that. Uh, and they deserve to have the feeling to win. You know, it's been a little while uh, and it's been, um, you know, you, when you get a chance to get a win, you got to enjoy it. And I think for me personally, uh, I'm just really happy for the players because I think they deserve that. And then, and then as an extension of that effort question, the, the, the sack that Robert had that, that essentially led to the missed field goal and then the, the, the fumble recovery by Jermaine, I'm curious as you watch those back the next day, how much your appreciation for those moments may heighten. You know what, Dan, that's a really good point you bring up. And there, there were several of those yesterday. I mean, also on top, well, first of all, I'll start with what you said. So the, the sack by Robert to, to push them back, uh, we had those back-to-back -back possessions where the defense could have easily folded and they could have kicked a shorter field goal and went up two scores and that didn't happen. Then they got another possession where they were, were able to get in there and we made them punt. 
Uh, so that was, that was really, really good. Um, you know, for, for Jermaine on the effort on the sack to be able to recover that fumble, if we don't get that fumble. We don't have a chance to score a touchdown. Um, Mooney catching that football uh, and, and running through and trying to break tackles and finish tackles. I think yesterday, if you go back and watch all of our games during the season, yesterday offensively, in my opinion, our coaching staff's opinion, was the best day that we had as a uh, run after the catch, whether it was a tight end with Komet and Jimmy, whether it was you know the running backs with Demo, whether it was the wide receivers with a bunch of guys that were catching and getting north and south. That part, and that, again, that's effort. You know, you're not you're not getting tackled for a catch tackle for one yard gain. You're getting extra yards, and um, there was a lot of those plays. I mean, just think about the last two plays on offense with the touchdown catch by Jimmy contested, with the con triple contested two point play. Um, there was a play before we got into the end zone where you see our offensive lineman just haul and ass to run down there and try to push the ball carrier into the end zone. Those are effort moments that, that we as coaches really appreciate. And they stand up, they stood out yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. Matt Finley. Matt, you were telling us uh, last night about the empty your cup thing. And, and you talked about what it meant to your players and to the other coaching staff. I'm curious about you personally, as you look at the next two weeks here and what might lie beyond it, do you have an appreciation for giving it every bit that you've got, um, you know, knowing that this group's not going to be together, uh, you know, beyond two weeks? Well, away? every year, you know, it's like that for every, every coaching staff and every team. But the one nice thing, Pat, is that when you kind of work the way that we do and, and the way that I try to pride myself on is you, you do that literally every day. And so when you, it becomes natural and you don't have to tell yourself, okay, this day or that day, th this day or that day, I'm going to go ahead and decide to do more or less. Um, I just, I just believe in that every day. I mean, I, I believe in hard work. I believe in, in doing things the right way and, and fighting. I believe in fighting, you know, when things aren't good or when things aren't easy. So really, as we know, going into these final two games, not being able to make the playoffs, uh, we, we have a, an obligation to do that. That's it. Plain and simple. And um, if I'm not doing that, then, then I'm, I'm letting someone else down on this team, whether it's a player or coach. And it's just real simple. That's not going to happen with me. Larry? Hey, Matt. Um, you've mentioned a, a couple of times different plays, but I just kind of wanted to ask you, um, after watching on tape, what stood out to you about the game-winning drive just from the start to the finish of it? Yeah, we had a, you know, a really good start to it. Um, and so Nick did a good job of getting football out on time. Uh, you saw high effort. And then what happens is then you, you get down there where you get to a third and third and 14 and you, you know that they're going to be in some type of shell defense. And so we got to try to that. That's not an easy play call or play design um, or play for the players to make. And fortunately, as we got down to that moment, um, you know, you, you kind of you have the clock working for you and against you at the same time, you know, because, you know, um, once you get down there, you're in four down territory. You also know you have some timeouts left, um, but you also have to be careful of scoring too quick because now you're going to give Russell and that offense time to kick a field goal and win. So there was a balance of all that. Um, I thought that in the end for Jimmy to make that play was pretty ironic playing at his former team. Um, it was, I was happy for him that he did that and that Nick gave him a chance and the O-line blocked. And then we all knew before that drive, we were going for two. So um, again, on that two point play, they showed man the safety buzz to the flat. They had three guys over there. They tried to pass it off and they got confused and left Demir open right away. And so um, it, it was, it was neat because Demir, he kind of, he felt that and snapped off his route. And then Nick saw it early and then, and then took, he pumped it and then hit it and gave him a chance to put it in the only spot that Demir can make a play. So all that said, the execution of the players being able to rebound back from some negative stuff I thought was good. And then our defense being able to, to stop them uh, at the end and, and not let them cross midfield to, to have an opportunity to win it. Bob? Matt, it seems fair to say that with Nick yesterday, I don't want to say better, but the offense ran as efficiently, uh, if not as well as it has all year long. And, and it looks awkward sometimes, but he just keeps making plays. And I'm wondering what that means to the development of everybody else on the offense, all the youngsters, all the other players. 
and what you might hope Justin could take from watching a performance like that. Well, yeah, you know, that, that's a, that's a real statement. And I say that because, but that's also a known statement that we all know and we're aware that when you draft a quarterback, um, there's going to be, there's going to be some experiences and time that he needs to be able to, to get better and let the game slow down for him. Now with Nick, with Andy, we have two experienced quarterbacks that have played a lot of NFL snaps in a lot of big moments. Justin's done it on the college side, but he's building that on the, on the NFL side now. And I, I really go back to Justin, his development in that Pittsburgh Steelers game, that moment he had where he took the team down the field and led them in a two minute drive to score the, the winning or what we thought was a winning touchdown. Um, and that was a great moment for him. It was growth. Um, so I think that we all understand as coaches, his teammates all understand as, as players, meaning Justin's teammates, that when he's out there, there's going to be some concepts and some defenses that he's never seen in this league. So it might not look as natural or as easy. And, but that's going to happen. And I think with Justin, when that comes and when you develop him and you, you're patient with that, um, you can really reap the benefits of, of his talent and his DNA of who he is as a person. But there's patience with that. And I think that's where when you have patience with a rookie quarterback and you, you don't anoint him, you know, uh, a Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, within the first year or two, you just have to uh, understand there's going to be some some, you know, some valleys as you go through it. So but Nick did a good job yesterday and the ball was coming out on time. Mark Potash. Hey, Matt, uh, just kind of curious, would you have gone for the two point conversion if this were like a playoff implication game? Or yeah. was that kind of a was that kind of a no, we, we kind of? On, on in that in the weather conditions uh, on the road against Russell Wilson um, in that moment? We, we felt good about the play call. And uh, I think, you know, that it was pretty if it, it was pretty uh, evident from the players, coaches, all of us that we felt really good in that situation, especially one of those games, too, when you're behind the entire game. And you can end it like that. I just I felt like uh, that we would have definitely done that. But that's something you would have done, even if like you were fighting for a playoff spot, right? I mean, yes. Okay. Yep. Well, I just had a question just about the, the the aggressive nature. You you set an aggressive tone when you in in your first year, and it seemed like uh you know it seemed like it's it's tough to find a balance for any coach when to be aggressive, when to be conservative. It almost seemed like sometimes you were conservative and you were criticized for it. Then when you were aggressive, you were criticized for it based on a yeah. play. When you take a step back, what do you think about, especially after that first year, how you've kind of, how difficult or it's been to find that balance between being that aggressive guy and, and then, and also finding the right spot to be conservative. Yeah. I think every year is a little different. There's always a feel to it. Uh, probably what you're getting to is some of it was, uh, you know, when we got down inside the five or even the two, you start you started to see some creativity with different players coming in, and, and even in different moments. Our, you can go back to uh, to eighteen when we uh, we ran Akeem Hicks on a fourth and one, um, you know, dive for a touchdown and, and some rainy elements. So um, I think every year is a little bit different based off your personnel, based off of the the, the part of the game, uh, and there's there's the whole point of being. Um, reckless and ruthless and there's always decisions that um, you make that that you you feel you know in the moment is the right thing to do and, and usually it is and and you're always going to be criticized because it's always um you know six to one half dozen the other and and that's just how it goes if you don't make it it was a bad play call if you make it it was a really good play call so that comes with the territory and if you can accept that as a head coach um, then you're going to be just fine. And as long as your players understand it. So, um, you know, that's kind of where I stand on all that. Okay. we got time for a couple more quick Mark Grody. Hey Matt, is it possible that you guys, uh, shut down Justin Fields for the final two games of the year? Have there been discussions of that because of the injuries? No, I don't see that happening. Well, you know, we're, we're going to continue to, to monitor him and see where he's at today and tomorrow and, and uh, in the rest of the week, but um, you know, I don't, I don't see that being the case at all. Thank you. Yep. Last one, Pat Finley. Matt, along those lines, uh, what role does the fact that the season's over in two weeks play in your evaluation of Justin? Uh, would it make you lean more conservative or or, or not? Uh, the con 